Chapter 556, Upset Stomach Lu Xu had thought that they would get into a fight upon meeting. But they had slowly started to peacefully get along with each other. This made Lu Xu rather surprised. There were people who said that the relationship between Li Yixiao and Nailin Kei would not rekindle. Lu Xu absolutely did not believe this. But this was a slightly awkward situation. Nailin Kei was also a representative of one of the families they wanted to do business with. They could not possibly discuss business face to face with Nailin Kei, right? Lu Xu knocked on the door and walked in. Nailin Kei glared at him as he entered. Although she knew that he had shown mercy when they fought the previous time, this did not stop her from bearing grudges. The grudge that Nailin Kei bore was not because Lu Xu had attacked her. It was because Lu Xu had punched Li Yixiao. Lu Xu glanced at Li Yixiao's work desk. Two large bags of snacks were laid out on the table. They seemed to have been bought from the supermarket. Lu Xu was curious whether Nailin Kei had bought these for Li Yixiao. It felt as if the two of them were dating once again. Ahem, Li Yixiao said to Nailin Kei slightly awkwardly. Do you want to go back first? Nailin Kei did not stay for long. She glanced at Li Yixiao and said, The two of you, discuss what you have to discuss. The Nailin family will fight fairly with the rest of the families. With that, she turned and left. This time, she was representing her family. Thus, she did not request for an advantage in this deal because of her relationship with Li Yixiao. Lu Xu felt that Nailin Kei was a very logical person. But she was constantly at odds with Li Yixiao, it might simply be because they were just not fated for each other. Li Yixiao waited for Nailin Kei to leave before asking, Representatives from six families are coming this time. Are you certain that you will earn so much money? Lu Xu laughed. No worries. Li Yixia muttered, My stomach is not feeling good. I can't digest the large pancake that you made for me. Just don't mess up when the time comes. Sure Shua Jean even came to warn me yesterday. Your stomach is not feeling good? Lu Xu was dumbfounded. You, a class B expert, and your stomach is poor? I don't know why either. I have suffered from diarrhea from a young age. Back then, I didn't make it in time to use tissue paper, so I used talismans instead, Li Yixiao said as he dug through the plastic bag of snacks on his table. He took out a pack of cranberry biscuits and passed it to Lu Xu. Here. From that crazy woman. Lu Xu opened the bag and ate one biscuit. It was not bad. He then looked helplessly as Li Yixiao opened a bag of snacks and took out the small pack of drying agent. Li Yixiao then evenly coated his biscuit with the drying agent. He even curiously looked at Lu Xu while doing so. Do you not add seasoning to your biscuit? Lu Xu fell silent. It's fine. I prefer it this way. Were you eating a dried noodle snack? Did you have to add seasoning? Don't you think that the taste is off? As expected of the physique of practitioners. He was lucky to only suffer from diarrhea. That stuff was fatal if ingested by others. Lu Xu suddenly solved the mystery of Li Yixiao's stomach. But why had no one reminded him not to eat that? Lu Xu suddenly felt that something was not right. Nailin Kei was together with Li Yixiao from morning to night and how could she not know? She did not remind Li Yixiao either. Lu Xu looked inside the plastic bag and realized that all the snacks had a drying agent. She wasn't here to court him and send snacks. Evidently, she still had some grievances towards Li Yixiao. She knew his habits too. Thus, she had intentionally sent these snacks to harm Li Yixiao. It was as if she was clearly stating. Come. If you hurt me, I'll hurt you back. Lu Xu shivered in fear. Women were frighteningly vicious. Although that crazy woman has a short temper, she still treats me well. She sent me snacks even after knowing that I am at the black market, Li Yixiao laughed as he praised Nailin Kei. As long as you're happy, Lu Xu secretly put back the biscuit. 
Lu Xu really wanted to meet Nailin Kei's grandmother. He just wanted to know the demeanor of the nobility. At the same time, he wanted to ask for advice regarding horoscopes. Li Yixiao ran to the toilet after less than half an hour. As he ran, he muttered in puzzlement, This is strange. I've been taking special care of my stomach recently. Lu Xu sat alone in the office and pondered. This time, six families had come. According to Li Xiao, it was not a problem for each family to take in a few thousand magical stones. Although the price of magical stones had been inflated, the families would still likely be willing to pay a certain price in order to gain control of this black market. The problem was, he could not sell the magical stones to each family one by one. He had to do it all at the same time. There was definitely some level of communication between the families. If the family that had bought the magical stones first leaked information to the rest of the families, then it was likely that Lu Xu would have no choice but to slowly sell the remaining magical stones he had. Li Xiao had intentionally urged the families again and again that they could bring mythical objects or training resources to exchange for the magical stones. Lu Xu certainly wanted to strengthen his and Lu Xiaoyu's power. Lu Xu felt that this was not a loss for the families either. If he did not put up the magical stones for sale, they would not have been able to get their hands on so many stones. But he felt that the families would likely be unhappy with the process and result. But it did not matter. Lu Xu felt that they would eventually understand his earnest thoughts. What time the negotiation would take place had not been decided. The families were waiting for Li Xiao and Lu Xu to contact them. On the other hand, Li Xiao and Lu Xu wanted to see how patient these families were. As more and more practitioners came to Luo City, the flow of people into the black market also increased steadily. In order to cater for this demand, Li Xiao personally brought the secret practitioners to dig up a few more bomb shelters. These bomb shelters were filled with abandoned construction materials. No one was willing to clean up the mess. In the end, Li Xiao did it all by himself. Lu Xu earned 99% of the shares from the steel, while Li Xiao only earned 1%. On the other hand, the ratios for the black market earnings were the other way around. Lu Xu earned 20%, while Li Xiao earned 80%. The black market was managed by Li Xiao. But without Lu Xu's magical stones, there would not be such a heavy flow of people into the black market. Before the actual negotiations started, the families had sent people to observe the situation in the black market. Unlike Lu Xu and Li Xiao, they were not careless in how they did things. These families had even sent people to secretly calculate the handling capacity of the black market, as well as the frequency of rare training materials appearing. Overall, they wanted to determine whether this black market was worth investing in or not. The result. It was definitely worth it. Although the big families were well aware that the secret practitioners came because the six families had gathered here, the current climate of magical energy in Luo City was suitable for them. Even if the families left, the Luoshan Cultivation College would still be there. Chapter 557, The Script is Wrong after Lu Xu confirmed a few details about meeting the families with Li Xiao, he left. These details mainly consisted of some points that they had to pay attention to. First, the families had to discuss at the same time. Only after they finished their discussion could they have the chance to interact. Secondly, they could not give up on this black market. They would have to wait until the deal was completed before they could go into detail on how to operate the black market. To Lu Xu, this black market was a business that was up to standard. His earlier businesses, such as selling stinky tofu by the roadside or selling Chinese chives, did not quite qualify as actual businesses. If Li Xiao could continue to control this black market, he would also continue to receive 20% of the profits. This black market would become his first business that could act as a steady source of income. At first, Lu Xu was worried that Li Xiao would spread the word that they were selling magical stones and extricate himself from the black market. Then, after the deal, he would once again have control of the black market. Wouldn't this make things difficult for Li Xiao? 
but after their discussion, Lu Xu realized that he had underestimated Li Yixiao's principle. From the start, Li Yixiao had no intention of allowing the black market to fall into someone else's hands. He was the lord of this territory. Li Yixiao's principle was that he had no principles. The two of them complemented each other well. Li Yixiao thought about it and said that he had not thought about how to deal with the families after the deal. But Lu Xu was not worried about this. Lu Xu walked out of Li Yixiao's office and prepared to go home. He still had to wake up early to practice his sword. He had saved up enough distress points to break through the third nebula. Thus, he did not even dare to draw the normal lottery, let alone by chi fruit. If he wanted to rebuild the snowy mountain, he had to rely on his own hard work. Lu Xu also felt that Li Xianyi's sea of qi had been accumulated through his own hard work. Only Lu Xu had taken the shortcut. Taking the shortcut had its own benefits. But you would miss out on a lot of things, for example some details and epiphanies about training. Lu Xu decided that he would take the rebuilding of the snowy mountain as a form of tough training, to make up for what he missed when he had taken the shortcut. Lu Xu had not walked far before he stopped in shock. Gao Shanin was in shock too. From Gao Shanin's distress, plus 666. Lu Xu was dumbfounded. Why was Gao Shanin here? Gao Shanin was even more shocked. He had been completing tasks at the border of Dian Nan when an elder from his family told him that someone who was exactly like him had appeared. He was even more surprised when he heard that this person was a sword expert and was a big name in the world of practitioners. Gao Shanin rushed back home to discuss this with his parents. Li Xiao had happened to contact the Gao family as well, thus the Gao family rushed over too. Lu Xu did not know that Li Xiao had contacted the Gao family. Li Xiao did not talk about the black market with Nalin K and Nalin K. Also did not talk about the information she had received with Li Xiao. Thus, this was a very awkward situation. Lu Xu suddenly felt that the process of working together with Li Xiao was like a textbook example of a mutually harmful relationship. Now that the person himself had appeared, what could he do? The secret practitioners by the sidelines were all dumbfounded. Everyone had just seen the venerable enter Li Xiao's office. And then, another venerable followed closely behind. Ha! Ha! Did you trust that they were real? But the secret practitioners had interacted with Lu Xu for a few days now. Lu Xu's symbolic harsh words had left a lasting impression on them. This characteristic was as conspicuous as a bright lamp in the dark night. So the secret practitioners knew that the person who had entered first was the venerable. The person who had followed behind looked exactly the same, but was not the same person, as Gao Shanin did not speak at all. Lu Xu quickly pondered about his reaction. You. Before Lu Xu could react, Gao Shanin said, Elder brother. Lu Xu was dumbfounded. The script, doesn't seem right. Gao Shanin said, Elder brother, what have you been doing these few years? Mom and dad are here too, but they were afraid that you wouldn't want to see them. So they sent me here. Let's go home. Lu Xu said, Do you have an older twin brother? Elder brother, stop it. Is there any meaning in your words? Gao Shanin asked. Um... Lu Xu did not know how to explain this. Earlier, when he had bumped into Kitamura Hirono, he had said that he was Hirono's twin brother from different parents. Now that he had disguised himself as Gao Shanin, why did the real Gao Shanin suddenly have an elder twin brother? I'm not. You've gotten the wrong person. Goodbye, said Lu Xu, wanting to leave. He had to think carefully whether he wanted to change his identity and continue working together with Li Yixiao. At this moment, Gao Shanin suddenly pulled Lu Xu's arm. Mom and Dad were wrong to not respect your wishes. But after so many years, I think you should forgive them. But didn't you want to conceal your identity and leave? Why are you practicing the sword now? Lu Xu was going crazy. What drama was this? But he did not want to continue playing along. 
he patted Gao Shanin's shoulder. I need to use the toilet. I'll talk to you later. Lu Xu immediately slipped into the newly renovated toilet in the bomb shelter. He quickly changed his clothes and appearance before walking out. When he walked past Gao Shanin, he still saw him waiting eagerly at the entrance of the toilet. I've let you down, brother. That night, news suddenly broke out in the realm of training. It was said that the expert that had appeared at the Luo City Black Market was the genius from the Gao family that had ran away from home. He was also the elder twin brother of Gao Shanin. Because it had happened a long time ago, and the younger generation like Gao Shanin did not receive much attention in the magical energy scarce era, thus no one paid attention to this information. The big families were all shocked. They did not think that the Gao family would also produce a class B expert. Lu Xu sat on his bed. As he sang Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, he felt that the situation was very messy. He had to sort it out. Shortly after, Lu Xu saw the distress points in the system's back end increase. From Gao Shenzai's distress, plus 199, plus 201. No one would let the distress points from the two brothers slip through their hands. As Lu Xu was thinking about what identity he would use from now on, the big families had formed a thought. They now knew Gao Shenzai's true identity. Furthermore, Gao Shenzai had come to Luo City so quickly and even dared to tussle with the Heavenly King. Did this mean that the Gao family have had their eyes on the Luo City black market for a long time? It looked like the local black market at the Cultivation College had roused the interest of many. The Dian Nan Gao family had actually taken precautions so early on. From their point of view, Gao Shenzai's appearance could not be a coincidence. Which family did not have children who ran away from home, only to come back very quickly? Blood is thicker than water. There could not be that much hatred between family members. Gao Shenzai was definitely the Gao family's secret weapon. That night, the respective families, who had arrived in Luo City but had not mobilized their troops, started to contact Li Xiao one by one. They felt that they might already be too late. They could not delay any further. Chapter 558 Begin the Negotiations After experiencing the clamor from the fall of the collection of gods from their peak position among the practitioner organizations, the new year seemed to bring a rare peace to the realm of training. Chinese New Year was approaching. The outside practitioners suddenly realized that the heavenly network seemed to be very silent. Those who knew the heavenly network's disposition would know that they were preparing to slaughter pigs and sheep for the new year. At this very moment, the practitioners in Luo City were extremely excited. The six families of power and influence were trying to seize control of the place. Who would emerge as champion? It was the weekend. The sophomore students were supposed to go to school for lessons, but Lu Xu did not go. Lu Xiaoyu was not at home. Lu Xu had sung Twinkle Twinkle Little Star for the whole night. At 3 a.m., he practiced his sword. His control got better with every swing. He went to the black market with his original appearance, conscientiously looking for broken weapons from the secret practitioners. Up till now, in terms of increasing the volume of mystical water, it was more cost-effective to buy broken weapons. Lu Xu squatted in front of a store and looked at the broken weapons sold by a secret practitioner. How much for five weapons? The secret practitioner thought that this unfamiliar face was a newbie. He started to exaggerate. Legend has it that this tool I have found was able to move mountains and fill seas in ancient times. But now, it is quiet, waiting for its fated owner. You can have it for a hundred thousand yuan. I accept magical stones too. Lu Xu got up and left. The secret practitioner shouted from behind. You might be its fated owner. Young man, come and get one. Lu Xu turned around and laughed. It's fine. What impressive tools can you find? The secret practitioner was speechless. From Wang Jigua's distress, plus 199. The venerable, was that you? 
the secret practitioners knew that this was definitely not the venerable, since their appearance was different. His words made them feel that they had met him before. While Lu Xu was sauntering about, Li Xiao was busy preparing the black market bomb shelter. When night fell, the usually locked rusty gate was instead wide open. Li Xiao personally welcomed his guests at the door. Thank you for coming all the way here. Excuse me for not going out to meet you. I don't have any tea for all of you. Shall we get to the main point? The representatives of each family were silent. Li Xiao used such a blunt tone to get straight to the point. Was he in such a position to start the discussion even before offering tea? As they were pondering about this, they suddenly saw Li Xiao turn around and ask a young man in a soft voice, Was what I said just now okay? I didn't prepare a script this time. His voice was soft, but the families could still hear him. The serious atmosphere suddenly vanished. The families looked at the young man behind Li Xiao with some surprise. This young man looked somewhat familiar, but they could not recall who he was. They wanted to conduct a check. But since they were already here, it was too late. Only two or three people from each family were present. Some of them looked around. Didn't Gao Shenzai from the Gao family become a well-known figure in the black market? Where was he? Gao Shenin recognized Lu Xu but did not care to talk to him. His family was also finding Gao Shenzai. The other families started to laugh sarcastically at them. Why were they complicating matters? Did you not know where your family member was? Li Xiao did not speak any nonsense. He brought the six families into the six rooms he had prepared earlier to start their negotiation. The families exchanged glances with one another. There seemed to be a secret agreement among the families. These families were not groups with completely no dealings with one another. On the other hand, the families had many opportunities to work with one another in different domains. When they had just entered the bomb shelter, one of the family representatives took out his phone, planning to contact another family. Outsiders would think that they were in constant conflict. But an alliance had been established within the families. Even in the worst-case scenario, two families would unite to control a black market. This was also acceptable. There was once someone who said that one bedroom would be occupied by six girls, but in the end seven places were built. When the big families started to think seriously about their profit, they would be a hundred times more extreme than the girls' bedroom. Under these circumstances, forming an alliance was one option. But betraying the alliance was also another option. At this moment, Lu Xu laughed buoyantly. The mobile signal in this bomb shelter may be quite weak. One of the family members looked at their phone. There was no signal at all. They were unhappy. Your black market facilities are too simple and crude. Even if it is underground, it won't cost much just to buy some equipment, right? When Lu Xu heard this, he became unhappy too. We have bought equipment. If you have bought equipment, why is there still no signal? We bought a mobile signal jammer. From Li Yunchu's distress, plus 666. From Li Yunmu's distress, plus 666. Lu Xu laughed coldly and walked out of the room. Since they wanted to prevent communication between the families, they had to do their preparations. It would be hard to handle if even one family leaked the information. One of the children wanted to walk out of the room in a fit to show his anger. In the end, Li Ixiao immediately became the good guy and said, Everyone, please don't be angry. This deal is very big, thus this is very important. This will also ensure that everyone is on a fair playing field, right? If you leave now, others will have an advantage. The person did not walk any further and returned to the room. Now, there were six families. They could walk backwards, but could they ensure that the other families would walk backwards with them? Li Xiao stood at the doors of the rooms to keep guard. Lu Xu was the one who was in charge of talking to each family. After softly discussing it with Li Xiao, Lu Xu entered the first room. 
He looked at Li Yunchu and the others before saying, I believe that Heavenly Kingly has explained the conditions to everyone, am I right? We have magical stones that we need everyone to buy before we can safely leave this black market. Heavenly King Li also asked everyone to bring their weapons, right? Li Yunchu was now calm. His anger just then was only for show. In the face of profit, he could give up his personal feelings and emotions. Li Yunchu was now judging the form of this discussion. Now that all the families were on the same starting line, they were at a disadvantage as the first family. For example, if they quoted a price of 350,000 for one magical stone, Lu Xu could go to another family and say, the Li family gave me a price of 400,000 per stone. Is there any other family who can give me a higher price? The Li family would then become a setup. But Li Yunchu could not understand one thing. If it were so simple, he could just set up an auction. Did he have to go through all this trouble? There was definitely some secret behind this. But Li Yunchu could not allow himself to be in a disadvantageous position in this competition among the six families. Chapter 559 Deal Li Yunchu said, The weapons we have brought are much better than the rest. Furthermore, we are very sincere towards you and Heavenly King Li. I don't care about sincerity. It only counts if I see the goods for myself, Lu Xu said as he smiled. The Luoshan Cultivation College has just been built. The promotion of this deal has attracted too many secret practitioners here. The turnover in the Luo City black market right now may be the highest in the country. I am not exaggerating. This is not a small business. But you also have to understand, Li Yunchu calmly said, that if the families are to compete seriously with one another, I'm afraid that your financial resources. This fellow was even prepared to fight back, huh? Lu Xu laughed. I feel that the other families would have the same thought. Allow me to confirm this with you. Are you planning to fight us? No. You are mistaken. From Li Yunchu's distress, plus 299. Li Yunchu suddenly realized the benefit of Lu Xu and Li Xiao completely splitting up the families. Since they had no way of communicating with one another, they would also have no way of reaching a common consensus. There is no knowing what is in a man's heart. In this kind of competition, the big families were at a disadvantage. Lu Xu had other backup plans, as he could still discuss with the other families. But Li Yunchu had no backup plan. Lu Xu sat facing Li Yunchu and carefully thought about what to say next. The price of the magical stones is secondary. The main aim of this negotiation is to see what weapons and training resources everyone has brought. Magical stones only cost so much. We will not lose money if we sell it to you. But if we simply give up this black market, it will be a great loss for us. Thus, our condition is that, when purchasing the magical stones, everyone must hand over a weapon in return. Wait. Did you say hand over a weapon in return? Does that mean we are simply giving away the weapons free of charge? Li Yunchu furrowed his eyebrows. These weapons are not cheap. Lu Xu laughed. There are both cheap and expensive weapons in the Darkness Kingdom, but on average they cost about a hundred million yuan each. Wouldn't it be worth it to exchange one weapon for a black market? Li Yunchu realized that Lu Xu had completely skipped the matter of the magical stones. Although it seemed like a fair trade, where they exchanged money for magical stones, but wasn't it worth it to exchange a weapon for the black market? The problem was, they were definitely buying the magical stones at a price higher than their market value. Lu Xu said, let's take a look at the weapons you have first. Who knows you might have weapons that are stronger than that of other families. This is one of the important factors contributing to our final decision. Lu Xu's hidden intentions had been fully revealed by now. His original intention was to obtain weapons. The weapons were the main aim of this deal. The families probably did not think that Lu Xu would be so greedy. He had split the families apart and occupied a superior position in the negotiation. 
now, they could not leave even if they wanted to. Li Yunchu thought deeply about it. Now, the most important thing was that Lu Xu was demanding for too much. After some careful thought, their family could accept this condition. But did Lu Xu plan to take their weapons just like that from the start? Up till now, Li Yunchu did not even know Lu Xu's identity. He was somewhat surprised. Why was the dominant figure in the deal this young man and not Li Yixiao? On the other hand, Li Yixiao was like a hired roughneck who made sure that the families did not act on their own. Who exactly was this young man? Was he Li Yixiao's expert in negotiation? He did not seem like one. He was very meticulous in his behavior. His words and logic were a far cry from an expert negotiator. Li Yunchu glanced at his younger cousin beside him. Li Yunmu took out a purple jade pendant from his pocket. Li Yunchu said, This piece of jade has been passed down in my family for many generations. Wearing this on your body will help you to concentrate. It can also improve blood circulation and delay aging. It will ensure that you are not too absorbed into your training as well. Lu Xu received the jade and put it in his pocket. Any others? Li Yunchu was dumbfounded. You put it in your pocket just like that? Without even confirming the deal? And, how many do you want, brother? From Li Yunchu's distress, plus 666. Lu Xu said, Did you really think that this piece of jade would be enough? Although this would ensure practitioners do not get too absorbed in their training, but its effects are normal. Did you think that I do not know anything? In reality, this kind of jade was very expensive on the market. But it suited the needs of young ladies more than that of practitioners. A celebrity had once paid 120 million yuan to buy a jade. This was much more affordable than receiving injections and undergoing plastic surgery. This promoted health and allowed one to preserve their youthful looks. But this had no use to Lu Xu. The Li family was also very clear that the tool they had put out could only be exchanged for money, but not for an equal amount. This was because female practitioners did not need this item, while male practitioners were particular about pure strength. The jade was actually of very little value. While it would sell well in a normal market, it did not have much use to practitioners. Although Li Yunchu was in an unfavorable position, he would not be controlled by others. If you cannot accept this, then the deal is over. Lu Xu wanted to continue with the deal. The both of them refused to budge for a long time. Lu Xu finally realized that the families had a stubborn attitude towards their weapons. Even the children of the families were not dumb. Although the weapons had value, there was no market for them. No one would carelessly put such an item on sale, right? Lu Xu laughed. I will hold on to this jade for now. I'm sure that you will not be afraid that I will run off with it, right? Li Yunchu laughed nonchalantly. We still have the spirit and vigor over here. Li Yunchu had said so, but on the inside he was somewhat worried. After all, he did not know who exactly he was dealing with. I am very satisfied with the jade. Let us discuss the price of the magical stones, Lu Xu said as he laughed. Li Yunchu glared at him. Weren't you obviously unhappy just now? Li Yunchu asked, What is your price? The price is definitely not up to us. Lu Xu calmly sat on the chair. I believe that you have mentally prepared for this. Whoever pays more will get it. What Li Yunchu dreaded the most had happened. He was most afraid that Lu Xu would use his price and demand a higher price from the other families. The Li family would have come here for nothing. Li Yunchu unconsciously started to tap his palm against the armrest. This was a sign that he was thinking deeply. What was their best choice now? He thought about it and decided to put out a high price, in an attempt to make Lu Xu confused. He said with confidence, to allow you to see the Li family's sincerity, we are willing to pay 400,000 per magical stone. Deal, said Lu Xu. Li Yunchu was dumbfounded. From Li Yunchu's distress, plus 999. 
Chapter 560, Please Pardon Me How many magical stones do you have? Li Yunchu asked hesitantly. Was Lu Xu planning to split a few thousand magical stones between a few families? Lu Xu laughed. Ten thousand. Four billion yuan worth of magical stones. Li Yunchu was suddenly in a mess, he could not figure out what made him so confused even after some thought. Wait a minute. He sat on the chair and looked at Lu Xu sitting opposite him. Lu Xu seemed very calm. Li Yunchu felt that something was not right. He obviously wanted to make things difficult for the other families. After the price was so high that no one could not afford it, Lu Xu would sit down and begin the talks again. At that moment, the Li family would not be in the awkward position of being the first family in line. He could afford this price, but the reason behind why he had suggested this price was to make things difficult for the other families. Logically, Lu Xu would discuss with the other families first, right? How could he just accept the deal just like that? This fellow did not conform to the logical flow of actions. Li Yunchu had also thought that Lu Xu would have other hidden intentions. But the problem was, 10,000 magical stones was the limit. It could not be the doing of the heavenly network either. As the families all knew Nye Ting's attitude towards training resources, they knew that Nye Ting wanted to suppress the families, whether consciously or unconsciously. How could he have taken out so many magical stones to convert to cash? According to their calculations of the Heavenly Network's production and mining levels, the Heavenly Network did not have so many magical stones in stock. The Heavenly Network had never taken pains to store their magical stones for future use. Instead, they used the stones to level up members with outstanding contributions, in order to prepare for the future unpredictable realm of cultivation. These figures could not be concealed, thus Li Yunchu immediately rejected this idea. They also had an estimate of the number of magical stones Li Ixiao possessed. He could not have gotten this from the black market alone. It was most likely that Li Ixiao had found his ill-gotten wealth from the Kochang Island remains. This made more sense. But a hundred thousand magical stones was probably the limit. They could not sell the stones to another family. Li Yunchu laughed. Then we look forward to working with you. Thank you for good management of this black market. The Li family will not hold back. Lu Xu left the room and retrieved ten boxes of magical stones from his seal of lands. He had packed the stones into smaller portions earlier. Each box had one thousand magical stones. Li Yixia was dumbfounded when he saw this. Have you finished the negotiations with the first family? Yes. Li Yixia was so shocked that he could not speak. Lu Xu was done so quickly? And, didn't he say that he had a few thousand magical stones? Why was he taking out so many stones in one go? And since when did Lu Xu have the time to pack the magical stones? After Lu Xu had taken out the 10,000 magical stones, he moved the stones into the room. He opened the box in front of Li Yunchu. Please check the quantity. Sure. Please give me some time. This is a big deal and we have to be more careful. Li Yunchu brought Li Yunmu and two other people to check the magical stones. When he saw that the words on every magical stone were in Japanese, Li Yunchu could finally heave a sigh of relief. These were definitely not from the Heavenly Network. It seems like Li Ishiao had really gotten these magical stones through other means. Could these magical stones have come from Nojoa Takenabu, who died in the Kochang Island remains? Li Yunchu was making too many guesses, but these were not important now. Receiving these magical stones meant that they had accepted Li Yixiao's initial promise. This black market belonged to the Li family. Lu Xu grabbed a laptop. He had brought a network cable with him, but did not turn off the mobile signal jammer. After Li Yunchu finished the transfer of funds, Lu Xu smiled. The Li family is too generous. Then we will take our leave. We will send someone to accept the black market at a later date, said Li Yunchu. No hurry, Lu Xu said with a smile. 
please take some time to rest here. With that, Lu Xu left the room. Li Yunchu wanted to ask why he did not let them leave, but Li Xiao had appeared at the door and prevented them from leaving. At this moment, Li Yunchu suddenly had an unpleasant premonition. But it couldn't be. To speak the truth, Li Xiao was also somewhat puzzled. Didn't Lu Xu sell all of his magical stones? Why was he making his way to the next family? In less than half an hour, Lu Xu left the room and took out ten boxes of magical stones from the Seal of Lands before going in again. Li Xiao's expression was nothing but shock. The families did not know the truth, but Li Xiao saw for himself how Lu Xu brought out 20,000 stones, then 30,000, 40,000. Li Xiao did not think that this would happen, let alone the families. Each family had thought that Lu Xu could only have so many magical stones on his hands, thus he could only sell them to one family. Nia Ting had thought that Lu Xu only had a few thousand stones, thus he decided to continue observing. Li Xiao had thought that Lu Xu only had a few thousand stones, thus he felt that 0.1% was too small a share. In the end, the most unthinkable thing had happened. Everyone had thought of all the possibilities, but they had never thought that Lu Xu would have so many magical stones. This was like thinking that you are very skilled in a game. Ha! <laughs> ha! I can carry the entire match even if I carelessly attack. But in the end, this would appear on your screen. What a cheater. Would you be shocked? Would you be surprised? When Lu Xu reached the fifth family, he suddenly felt that there was something wrong with the weapons the family had shown. When they had taken out the weapon, he felt his heart's white flame jump suddenly. It was just like when he had first come face to face with the puppet master. What was happening? He did not waver in his tone and continued discussing with the family. When the opportunity came, he played the same old trick as he did with the other families and he put the weapon into his pocket. After Lu Xu finished the deal with the sixth family, he dragged Li Xiao and left. Let's hurry up and go. If we leave any later, we'll get into trouble. The families could only sit in the room and wait. But after one hour, they felt that something was not right. Someone opened the door and looked outside. Lu Xu and Li Xiao were gone. Nalin Kei shouted, Li Xiao, where in the world are you? Nalin Kei was still rather happy then. She felt that Lu Xu had been straightforward in the deal because Li Xiao had dealt with it earlier. Honestly. This fatty, not telling her in advance that he wanted to dote on her. The other families started to come out of their rooms. Nalin K was all smiles when she said, Everyone, please pardon me. Please pardon me. Please. Everyone fought to say this, but in the end they realized something. What were they asking pardon for? It was all over for them. From Nalin K's distress, plus 999. From Gao Shanin's distress, plus 999. From Li Yunchu's. That night, an earth-shaking incident happened in the Luo City realm of cultivation. What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Last half full or empty and we just put them on the show Try to look to the heavens 